Hello you lovely people and welcome. Today we're going to take a look at the latest update for the Codename Flankers SU30 mod. Finally got an EFM, uh, so we're going to take a, a look at that um, and how it how it flies. Um, the systems are pretty much the same. Um, I know they're still working on it. Uh, there's still two variants, the uh, ground attack and air to air, which still uses the SU-33 Flaming Cliffs and SU-25T from the original game for the ground attack. So um, let's just take a quick look at what we've got. So we've got the MKA, MKA which is the Algerian, uh, so we've got the air to air, air to ground, uh, MKI which is the Indian variant uh, which carries the BrahMos um, anti-ship missile if we take a look at that quickly it comes with a range of liveries as well um, I'm not sure if they've been updated or not uh, I guess they would have done to go with the new EFM um, but if we just go to the loadout quickly and I think it's on station yeah station 6 so we've got the huge BrahMos missile there uh, and they, they are modelling their own weaponry as well so this has come a long long way um, I remember when they first released it it relied heavily on the SU-33 mod uh, for all sorts of things and would fly a bit funny and would spin around in circles uh, if you were going slow and turning too quickly um, I haven't come across that just yet then we have the MKM variant, which is um, Malaysian. And then we've got the SM, which is a domestic variant, uh, which the uh, Russian Navy and the Russian Air Force use. And we'll change. Yeah, we'll keep it light blue. Why not? Actually, no, we'll go for Kazakh Air Force, because I quite like that. Um, so I did have it armed with uh, a couple of... Um, Archer M2s and Adder Cs. Um, I'll take the armament off because this is just purely, we're just going to be purely looking at the flight model um, and the new additions. So let's jump in the cockpit and get her up in the air. So just a brief uh, overview of the cockpit quickly. So we've got all of our switches that are, the majority of them are clickable, uh, which is really good. Um, we have um, now got proper nose wheel steering so you'll need to have that activated and that will show up in the the HUD the HUD symbology has changed a, a lot over the previous versions and this is no exception to the rule no waypoints different uh, modes that we're in so we're in nav at the moment we can change it to return or landing or just nav as normal or en route and we can also have this awesome little reticule for helmet mounted sight for um, IR missiles and we've got the longitudinal aiming mode as well for that and then we've got BVR uh, which we're obviously going to need the radar on as you can see we've got nothing on the screen at the moment uh, won't anyway because I won't be using well I've got the radar on now and the electro optical system the IRST on the nose here that would be active um, thrust vectoring I'm going to activate that there I have a switch on my uh, joystick that will activate that on and off as and when I choose um, I'm going to try and perform some sort of Cobra maneuver and see just how maneuverable this new EFM is because a lot of things have changed on it. So let's jump outside. So as you can hear, I think it keeps the old Saturn engine sounds from the SU-33 Flaming Cliffs mod, for which I need to emphasise again: you will need both the SU-33 and the SU-25T for um, this module to work. SU-25T already comes with the, um, the game itself, but for the 
uh, air to air side of things you do need that Fleming Cliffs SG33 so yeah just having a look around it I mean it's a fantastic looking model it's been well, uh, well done and just going to switch on the um, thrust vectoring as you can see nothing's happening at the moment click that switch and we now have thrust vectoring control wherever we need it um, and I'm quite worried about using it if I'm completely honest because it's yeah it, it, I have a funny feeling I may end up crashing this um, so yeah let's let's jump back inside taxi down and take off okay so let's get going And the first thing of note is we actually have tow brakes. We now have a rudder, th rudder authority for the the braking system, which is good. It's not a, a switch on either the throttle or the flight stick. Uh, we've got nozzle steering. How's that? That seems to be working quite nicely. No point in jumping in the back seat, nothing's clickable. Um, although I could, can show you what the view looks like. You can still fly from the back, um, just nothing's clickable um, at the moment by the looks of things. Okay, so this is at the back, and the, the view is phenomenal, it really is. Um, as you can see, I've got pilot body there, it moves. Uh, you can control the aircraft, but there's no real um, clickable buttons anywhere in the cockpit, so not that I've found anyway. You might be able to use oh, you can use the screens, okay. Um, but other bits and pieces are not not active at the moment. Oh, we're veering off. Let's jump back in the front. to nav and it's nice to see the, the the custom symbology rather than the old flaming cliff symbology and like I say it's come a long way from the early days so much of the aircraft has come to life and is actually interactive um, like I say most of the switches are clickable I believe I've even done a start up on the old variant not sure if that still applies, I'll have to look into that. Um, we'll fast forward to the, to the runway. Right then. Let's get this thing up in the air, landing lights on. Yep, all good. Probably going to regret my decision to perform these maneuvers so close to the ground. I won't be going fast at any rate because obviously thrust vectoring is only really any good if you're low low speed handling whether it actually has it, um, any benefits in dogfighting has yet to be proven a lot of people say no a lot of people say yes but until it's actually been proven in a real dogfight nobody has an answer okay so thrust vectoring control is off um, we are going to open the taps, get up in the air. Get up. Gear is coming up. Off the th throttle. Okay. 
mean, first first things first, I mean it handles really well. And we have wing flex. Check that out. And a freeware mod module. Angle of attack. And a tail fins wobble. Stall warning. Wow. Stall That's warning. impressive. Stall warning. Stall warning. Okay. Can you, yeah, I know what the situation is. I'm, con I'm in control. Well, I like to think I am anyway. All right, let's get over the airfield. Altitude low. I know it's low. That's the point. I forgot to change the altitude warning. Once you get below 1,500 feet, it warns you. And I think there's also uh, an auto recovery. If you get too low, it pulls itself up from the ground which um, is a scary thing in itself ok so 520 knots, it's about not, not sorry, uh, kilometres an hour, probably too fast but we'll see switches on that was a pathetic attempt at um, Cobra just a really weird climb up ok so let's just do a ro uh, yeah we'll do a, a roll and without it mm, yeah not much in it really Stall warning. I'm aware Stall warning Stall warning Stall warning. Stall warning. Try one more time. Okay. Off. Again, not really a cobra, but a bit closer than it was previously. Let's see if we can do Don't one of warning. those uh, impressive, tight roll over the top. <clears throat> Maybe even a flat spin if I can get it in a flat spin. Okay, it's off. bad actually to be fair he's a bit bit higher for my um, combined effort I'm gonna stick some rudder in this time see what happens try and get some external shots of this as well Let's go for go for it now. So fling up, take it off, and a boot full of rudder. Stall warning. Well, I don't know if that looked Angle good any at all. A good at all, but nearly killed myself in the process. The fact that we now have 
vibrations in the wings, the tail surfaces, it's come a long way. Well, all I'm going to say Tango is well done attack. guys, I mean it's fantastic, it really Tango is. Well, what can I say? Uh, that's pretty amazing. I've not mastered the Cobra yet, but I'm sure we'll do with enough practice. Um, definitely manoeuvrable for enough for it. The work that has gone into this mod has been is just absolutely unbelievable and deserves a lot more attention than it's actually getting. Um, I'll put a, li a link to uh, Codename Flanker's Discord um definitely go over and have a look uh, you can download it from there i may include the download load link as well in the description but my word this thing if you can ignore the back seat for now with the annoying pilot and and the lack of controls this thing is absolutely amazing for free these guys are putting a lot of work and dedication into it Give them, give them your support so they, th they really do deserve it. Like the community A4 guys, like um, some of the others that are coming in, like um, the guys with the Bronco. You know, th these, um, these are the types of uh, developers that we should really be praising because they do it in their spare time and, you know especially for um, just guys who do it in their free time this this uh, SU-30 has just come on leaps and bounds so if you've got DCS and you've got the SU-33 and SU-25T definitely give it a go I mean there's there's no harm in it it's free and it works and it's a lot of fun so I'll leave it at that that's that's the end of my summary but for free, there's no reason why this it shouldn't be in anyone's um, selection on DCS. So with that, I'm going to leave it there. But if you got this far, thank you for watching. And as always, take care and I'll catch you in the next one.